Let's say you're given two straight lines, so two linear curves. The first one we call y1, and it has a positive slope. The second one we call y2, and this one has a negative slope. In addition, for each of these lines, you're given the algebraic equation. So the equation of a linear function, which we know to be y is equal to a times x plus b, with a and b being the parameters that define the slope and the position of the curve. Here, for instance, let's say that we have y1 is equal to a1 times x plus b1. And similarly, for y2, we have y2 is equal to a2 times x plus b2. And given this arrangement, you are now asked to find the intersection of these two straight lines. So in this case, that would be this point right here. Now, of course, it doesn't just ask you to draw this point on a graph. This would be all too easy. It asks you to find the exact coordinates of this point. So an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Therefore, what we're asked is to, starting from these two algebraic equations of two straight lines or two linear curves, we need to find the pair of numbers X and Y, which represent the coordinates of their intersection. And that's exactly what we'll be doing in this video in four short exercises. As always, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. So let's get right into it. In the first exercise, we have the following two curves. The first one is this one right here, which we will call y1. And it has an equation that is the following. y1 is equal to minus x plus 2. The second linear curve is this one with a steep slope in the positive direction. This one we call y2. And the algebraic equation for y2 or the linear function is equal to y2 is equal to 2 times x. And of course, we are asked to find the intersection point of these two functions. And this intersection point has an x coordinate and it has a y coordinate. And it is our task to find these x and y coordinates. So how will we go about doing this? Well, since we know that both linear curves are represented by these algebraic equations, or y1 and y2, we can simply say that this intersection point right here is the place where the two linear functions are equal to each other. Because at exactly this point, the same x value will return the same y value, both for y1 and for y2, for both linear functions. We can translate this intuition by saying that at this intersection point, and only at this specific intersection point, the function y1 will be exactly equal to the function y2. And this equation basically just represents the fact where this curve is equal to this curve, so where they intersect. Now, for each of these two curves, we have an equation that we can plug in. So let's do that right now. y1 is equal to minus x plus 2, and this has to be equal to simply 2x. This can be rewritten by taking this minus x to the other side of the equality sign, and thereby becoming plus x, such that we have plus 2 is equal to 3x. Or with other words, x is equal to 2 divided by 3. So what did we now actually find here? Well, we found an x value for which y1 is equal to y2. So an x value where both of these functions are equal to each other. However, we were asked an x and y value. We still need to find this y value. Well, this can be easily found by plugging this x back into our two equations for both linear curves. And we know already that for this x value, both of these functions, even though they are different, this one is minus x plus 2 and this one is minus 2x, will still give the same y value, namely the y value of the intersection. So for the first equation, we get y1, which will be equal to minus x, but minus x is minus 2 over 3 plus 2. And this can be easily calculated to be 4 divided by 3. So we already now have our y value of our intersection, namely 4 divided by 3. However, we can of course double check our solution by filling in our x that we found in the second equation. And we should get the same y value. So if we take y2, which is equal to 2 times x, but x is equal to 2 over 3, 
then of course we also get 4 over 3. And so both of these linear curves will get the same y value for the x value x is equal to 2 over 3. And that's exactly the property of a intersection point. Therefore, we can conclude that our intersection point is for x is equal to 2 divided by 3 and y is equal to 4 divided by 3. And this is our solution already. So let's go to the second exercise, exercise number 2. In this case, our first function, y1, will be a linear function with a low slope, namely y1 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 3 times x. And our second linear function will simply be a horizontal line, y2. And we know that the horizontal line is also a linear function, but it is characterized by simply y is equal to a constant number. In this case, y2 is equal to 5 divided by 2. And from this algebraic equation, we see that y2 is not dependent on x. And this is clear because for each x on the x-axis, the same y value will occur. This is just a horizontal line. And again, we are asked to find the intersection point of these two curves, which means that we need to find an x value for this point and a y value for this point. But of course, we already see that the y value will actually be the same as the y value for this horizontal line. But let's do the same procedure as we did before, because we know that this intersection point is defined as the place where the two curves are equal to each other. Therefore, y1 will have to be equal to y2 in this point. So we know that y1 will have to be equal to y2. Both linear functions will have to be equal to each other. Now we can fill in the expressions that we have for these two functions. For y1 we have 1 plus 1 over 3x and for y2 we simply have the constant number, namely 5 divided by 2. If we bring the 1 to the other side of the equality sign, we get 1 over 3x will have to be equal to 5 over 2 minus 1, which will be 3 over 2. Multiplying each side of the equality sign by 3, and therefore getting rid of this 3 in the denominator, we find the following, that x will have to be equal to 9 divided by 2. And this is already the x-coordinate where both functions are equal to each other, or where both functions intersect. And this is already this coordinate. Now, as mentioned before, at this point, we already know the y component, namely just the y that is characterized by the second linear function, 5 divided by 2. However, we can check our result by filling in the x that we found into this first equation and see which y that we actually get. And this just as a nice check to see whether we didn't make any mistakes. So we get y1 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 3 times x, but x for the intersection is 9 divided by 2. So we get 9 divided by 2. This simply becomes 1 plus 3 divided by 2, which is of course 5 divided by 2. And yes, this is the exact same result as we get for this second equation. And therefore, this will exactly be the y component of our intersection point. So the intersection point in this case will be for x 9 divided by 2 and for y simply 5 divided by 2. And this is already our result for the second exercise. So now that we're getting the hang of it, let's go to the third exercise. In this case, we have y1 being this function right here, which has a algebraic equation which is equal to x minus 1. And the second straight line will be this one, and we will call this one y2. And y2 has the algebraic form or the linear function to be minus x plus 1. And again, we're asked to find this intersection point of these two lines. And we already see that the y component will be simply 0. The intersection point is on the x-axis. So the only thing that we're left to do is to find the x component. And by now we clearly know how to do this. An intersection point of two straight lines means that at this point the algebraic equations for these straight lines or the linear functions will have to be equal to each other. So we simply put them equal to each other. So y1 is equal to y2. Now this can be rewritten because we have expressions for y1 and y2, these two straight lines, namely x minus 1 for y1 
and minus x plus 1 for y2. Getting all of the x's to one side of the equality sign and all of the numbers to the other side, we find the following. We have 2x is equal to 2. Now we see that this 2 can be cancelled out and we get our final result that x is equal to 1. And this will be the x component of our intersection point. So this here will be simply 1. Now, as before, we already know that y will be equal to 0 because our intersection is on the x-axis. But of course, as always, we can check our result by plugging in this x value and see whether we indeed get the same y value. So for y1, our straight line with a positive slope, we get x, which is plus 1, minus 1, and this is indeed 0. Now for y2, the curve with the negative slope, we get that minus x, which in this case will be minus 1, plus 1, which is also 0. So our intersection point is x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0, just like that. And to end off, let's go to the fourth and final exercise where we are going to see that the mathematics actually overlaps with our intuition. Our first linear curve will be this one, namely y1, which has a linear function or an algebraic equation to be 2 times x plus 3. Our second straight line will be this one, and it will be parallel to the first one. It, in turn, will have an algebraic equation of 2x minus 3. Now we all know that two parallel lines will not have an intersection point. That's basically the definition of parallel lines. And this geometric intuition that we have of two parallel lines, that they don't have an intersection point, should also bear out from the mathematical procedure that we did in this exercise. So let's do that and see whether it indeed does. So an intersection point would take place at the point where both of these equations are equal to each other, meaning that an intersection point would be at the point where y1 is equal to y2. Filling this in, we get 2 times x plus 3 would have to be equal to 2 times x minus 3. Now, of course, we already see a problem occurring here. This 2x and this 2x on both sides of the equality sign, they cancel out. And what we are left with is something very strange, of course. We get that 3 is equal to minus 3. And this is, of course, simply not true. This is just a false statement, which leads us to believe that our initial statement was also false, meaning that these two are equal to each other. And therefore we conclude that these two curves can never be equal to each other, meaning they don't have an intersection point. In turn, meaning that these two curves will have to be parallel to each other. And this brings us to the end of this video. And I hope that you're now more familiar with how to calculate the intersection between two straight lines. Feel free to go to the channel and browse around for any other topics that you want to have some practice on. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and you can also consider subscribing. And with that, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.